welcome to It's So Friday. I'm Elizabeth and I'm here at Robert Kaufman and we are going to be making the forage bags today. I'm super excited about this. Um, I started as a quilter and eventually you quilt a bunch of quilts and then you just want like a little project that's maybe a little bit easier to try out. And uh, this bag is a great way to delve into bag making. You can see what it looks like right here. These beautiful forage bags, both in small and large. This collection is by designer Anna Graham of Noodlehead, and the bag pattern is also a free pattern by Noodlehead for Robert Kaufman. You can find information on the free pattern and where you can buy your own kits and Anna's fabric on the link in the profile. If you're watching on Instagram, drop on over to Facebook. This is going to be a really great episode to watch on Facebook. Now, a little bit about this fabric. It is printed on Essex and Essex yarn dye. There are 20 different fabrics in all these lovely colors. You could get a bundle or just pick yardage of your favorites in stores now. All right, to get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the forage bag pattern, again, from the link in the post. It is a free pattern. It looks just like this. That's how you'll know you have the right pattern. You're going to need a few different things for this project today, aside from your fabric. You'll need about a half yard of uh, the main skew and yeah, like a quarter-ish yard. The, the yardage is in the pattern. Read the yardage in the pattern. Don't guess from me. Anyway, pick your favorite skews. You don't have to use the exact ones we use, but pick your skew that you want as the main body and as the accent top. And you're going to go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces from the pattern. So we picked the mini size, and this is what the pattern piece looks like for the bottom of the bag, and this is what it looks like for the top of the bag. So the whole project, only two templates, not too bad. Okay, next, good things to have on hand. You're going to need to get some eyelets for uh, the bag hardware. Now, the pattern recommends getting 3 8 inch eyelets. I couldn't find them with a setter that was already included, so I got seven by 16, and that's okay. It worked great. Okay, so we're gonna just, whoa, that's a mess. We're just gonna set this aside until later. I think it's very helpful to have this little guy. Now, a bunch of my friends have told me that they have one of these in their sewing rooms and they don't know what the heck it does. This is the bias tape maker, and it's going to save your fingers lots of iron burns when you're making bias tape. It's fantastic. So, I, you need the dark blue one for this project. It's helpful to have a hammer. Well, it's necessary to have a hammer. So if you don't have a hammer in your sewing room or at least somewhere in your house, find a place where you can go ahead and get a hammer, set it aside for later. Like I said, you'll need that setting tool for your grommets. And I love Wonder Tape. It's, uh, it just comes in a quarter inch thick, like sticky roll like this. And I keep it in the plastic that it comes in so that it doesn't get uh, fabric dust all over it. That's going to be very helpful for later on. You'll also need a nice sharp pair of scissors. These are my paper scissors though, so I'm gonna use these scissors. They're my Kai shears and they're wonderful. And for the miniature bag, you're going to need a six inch zipper. Now you can use a zipper with plastic teeth, but I think the ones with the metal teeth look really sharp and are going to give your bag that polished, finished, professional look when you're done. So. Nothing to be afraid of, get a six inch zipper. That means that you should have six inches of zipper from the start to the, to the bottom. And you'll have an, about an inch or so above and below, and that's okay. Okay, once you've gone ahead and you've got all your supplies gathered and you're ready, uh, it's important to read the directions or watch the video as I have read the directions once, kind of know what I'm doing. All right, on your machine, you're going to need a one half inch seam allowance and also a quarter inch seam allowance. And now we're just gonna go for it. Okay, so you've cut out your pieces, what's next? When you are cutting out your main template piece, and actually um, all the pattern pieces, will tell you how many of each thing to cut on them. So actually if we zoom in, if we can go over to our up close view, I'm gonna show you what we're talking about here. So you can see that this says two exterior fabric, cut one, then cut one to the dotted line. Then two lining fabrics, cut one, cut one to the dotted line, and then four fusible woven interfacing, cut two, then cut two to the dotted line. Let's cut back to our main scene. We'll talk more about this. Now you better believe the first time I read this, I did not read the directions all the way. And so I cut all my pieces and then I didn't know what the heck I was doing and had to go back and read again and say, oh, the dotted line. Okay, 
If you don't want to cut your dotted line, you think I'm gonna use this pattern a bunch more than just this one time, a really easy way to do that is just to fold the pattern piece on the dotted line instead of cutting it. So your piece will kind of look like this. And then uh, you could cut both pieces at the larger size and just cut one down at the dotted line, or you can cut the one full size, fold the pattern piece, then cut the one smaller. But you will have two pieces that are almost the same. The only difference is the height is just a little bit less on one. And the one that is shorter is for the front. And so I found it very helpful to take a, a erasable pen and just write like a big F. Here, if we go over to the zoom in, I'll show you what I was talking about. So this was just so that I knew that that was for the front. And then on both of my lining pieces, if you look for the one that's smaller, I've already interfaced this one and just write that so you know that that's for the front. All right, let's go back to our sewing table now. Okay, after you've cut all your pieces, you need to match your piece with your interfacing and you're going to go ahead and interface all of your pieces. Now we're using Pellin SF101 iron-on interfacing, which is so great because it's just quick and easy to do uh, attach interfacing. What I like to do is lay my pieces out on my ironing board and then lay the coordinating interface piece uh, with the, you'll be able to feel there's a bumpy side with the glue dots and you're going to lay that side onto the back or to the wrong side of your fabric. And then just taking a um, hot dry iron, just go ahead and give it a good press and that will um, have the glue adhere to your pattern piece. And now you have interfaced pieces. So these are my accent pieces, I'm gonna set those here. And for the main body pieces, do the same thing. If you had your fabric folded to cut the initial template, it uh, doesn't hurt to unfold it and give it a little press beforehand just to make sure you don't get any like weird bumps in there. And remember how I just wrote that, that front that F on the main piece. Well, I'm about to uh, iron over it and that's gonna disappear. So I will have to go back and rewrite that. Sounds about like something I do at home all the time. All right, now when you're ironing on interfacing, make sure that those glue dots go down towards the wrong side of your fabric. If you accidentally leave them up and iron on them, you are going to do a real number on your iron plate and that is not what anyone wants. Okay, so going back over here, I'm just going to mark the front and set those aside. Now the last things, I've already cut out my pieces for this bag, it comes together really quickly. The last things I need to interface are these two long strips that will be the straps. And so, whoa, oh. <sighs> getting old, my knees are aching. It's hard to drop things on the ground now. Okay, laying out my long strips. And it helps to have a full-size ironing board for this instead of just a pressing station because then it's just quick and easy. And again, just laying out your, your interfacing. And giving it a good little iron. It doesn't hurt to go over this a couple times as you interface um, just to make sure that it's really secured. Sometimes um, if I'm not paying that much attention or if my iron isn't all the way warm yet and I interface, um, but I'm not really uh, giving it time to set, the, the interfacing doesn't stick around the edges and then I have to kind of go back later and give it another press. If you have any questions during the uh, episode, just shoot them out and I'll do my best to answer them live. Otherwise, we'll come back afterwards and answer all of them as well. Okay, now we've got all of the pieces cut and interfaced, and I need to read the directions a little bit to see, oh, I wasn't done with that, to see, oh, oh, I can show you about transferring all your markings. So in this pattern, you have a little dart at the bottom here, and the way to um, trace or to mark your dart that's easy, let's go over to our a little up close and I'll show you. Okay, so you have all your bag pieces that need this dart. And the easiest way to do this is actually to just cut out along one side of the dart. So now you have your pattern looking like this. And now just fold back. I guess you could cut out entirely the entire dart, but I just like to fold it back like that. Someone 
told me this trick once, and I don't remember who, but it's a great tip, and I love it. Okay. With my uh, pattern piece folded so that it's for the one for the, uh, for the front, I'm just going to go ahead and draw on that dart. Whoa, that was, this is a pressing mat that it's on, so it's moving a little bit more than it maybe should. That's okay. The beautiful thing about darts in garments is, or in uh, bags, is that it's not a garment. So if it doesn't go like exactly perfect, it's okay. No one's going to judge you. Your bag is never going to say, you know what, that dart, it wasn't perfect. So you should just not use this bag anymore. Nope, it'll never say that. It's just very forgiving. Okay, so we are marking our darts. And take your time with it. It's not a race. It's just, you know, beautiful darts. Well, that one was like all kinds of kooky. So if you do that and you get some kind of crazy line going on, you can do this where you like draw an arrow to show you which line you actually want. So like that crazy line, we don't want that one. But now I'll know which one is the right line when I go to pin this together later. Those are looking good. And one more. Oh, look at there's a dart party over here. All we're gonna do for the rest of Sew Friday is mark and sew dot uh, dart. Oh, dot. I'm kidding. Don't worry. We're gonna make a whole bag. You won't be doing this forever. Okay. Once you have your darts marked, what you're going to need to do is take your pin cushion and fold this. You're trying to like match up the lines as best you can. And maybe there's like a better way to do this. When you mark your dar darts, make sure you put them on the wrong sides because you want to be able to pin. And you can see how I'm kind of pinning through and then trying to line it up with that line as I pin with my straight pin. And it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna call that one good. So I'm gonna repeat this process, fold it in half, Try and kind of see where it's matching up at the top and at the point, and then try pinning again. Now, I hate pinning as much as the next person. Everyone who's watched more than one Sew Friday knows that. But um, this is just a really easy way to keep those fabrics folded where you want them. And we're just going to go ahead and repeat that process for all of our pieces. Okay, so exciting. Pinning. really good about that. Oh, we're, we're to the crazy one. Where are we up to? Where is this one? Hmm. Okay. This is what's, <laughs> sorry, the conversations that go on in my head sometimes while I'm sewing are like, forget I have a mic on and everyone can hear me talking to myself. Okay. We're getting there. Pinning again. And it's really great if your pins are really straight at this point. So like pins that you haven't sewn over a few times. I don't know about you, but like a lot of my pins at home are like doo -doo, because I've hit them with the sewing machine or whatever. And then I just put them back in my pin cushion. And then when I actually need a straight pin, it's like, oh, you don't have any of those anymore. You need to go buy some more pins. That's like my entire pinning life here. It's a struggle. Okay. Back to pinning. Oh, that one was way off. Okay. So you can see how I'm in the line here, but not on this side. That means I need to kind of smush this over just a little bit more. Wow. This one is like having a real day. There we go. Okay. And the great part about this process is that it's pretty much, well, it's very similar for like every other bag that you'll probably make that has a dart. Um, every bag pattern I've ever made calls for interfacing first and making your darts. So this is just a really great way to give you some confidence if you haven't done it before. All right, now that we've got all our pieces pinned, let's go back to our sewing machine and 
go ahead and now what we're going to do is just sew on the, the line on each one of our little darts. So let me put my needle right down the middle so that it's just right where I know it's going to be and get my pin cushion. And once I've got my presser foot down, I am just going to um, take the whole pin out and then sew on that line. I know it's assuming that I'm like pretty confident um, that nothing's going to shift around, but if I pinned correctly, then it should be right. Um, now also uh, make sure that when you start and start stop your dart, you go back and forth a few times just to kind of lock that in. If you're making a garment, you don't want to do it that way, but uh, for a bag, it's okay. Okay. So you can see I've successfully sewn my first little darts and now my pattern or my piece, instead of um, just laying flat, kind of has this gentle curve in like a bag will. Beautiful. We're going to repeat this with all four pieces for the front, the back, and the lining front and back also. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're on to piece number three. And on to the other side. Oops, take out the pin. And the last piece. And one more set of darts to sew in. Okay. And here's our very last dart. All right. Now you have all four of your pieces, your front and back uh, exterior and front and back lining. Woohoo! And you're finished with this pattern piece now. You can set it aside for later. Now, let's go ahead and read the directions and see what the heck we're going to do next. Okay. So, first direction was to read the directions. Did that. Here were the directions saying to uh, sew that dart. Went ahead and did that. All right. Next, we're going to make the strap. So, let's set this aside. And let's talk about this long piece of fabric. Okay. You have these two long pieces of fabric and to make this strap you're going to line them up right sides together along one of the short edges and so using a uh, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance I think it's okay actually seam allowances are half inch unless otherwise noted so I should probably use a half inch seam allowance okay and I'm going to again start and stop at the beginning and end of my seam or forward and backwards, not start and stop. Obviously, you're starting and stopping. Now I'm going to go ahead and press this open so that it stays nice and flat because we will be doing uh, a little bit more with this strap. Okay, now, in the pattern, it talks about having you fold the fabric in this way, in this way, and then again in half so that you get this really nice piece of fabric with all your raw edges enclosed. And you can totally do that without any tools, but it can be kind of tricky. So um, we're going to show you how to use your bias tape maker, which is this guy, to do this a lot faster. So let's come on over to our little side up close table. I'm going to show you. I had to move a few little things that are going to be in the way. Okay. The way that you use this thing is you're going to feed this piece of fabric through here and it's going to start the fold of the fabric for you. Now there's a really, I mean you could try it without a pin, but the easiest way to do this is to kind of gently push this in and then if it gets stuck here, I like to take a straight pin and just kind of push the fabric through and of course this is like a super fine quilting pin so this one doesn't want to do it, but here this one's a little more heavy duty. Oh, what the heck is happening? Oh, all the weight is pulling it the other way. All right. So we go ahead, kind of feed this in, 
got to shove it through. This is tricky. It's because it has interfacing. I like see it coming out this end, but it's giving me grief. Oh boy. It's always easier when you do this at home. I'm telling you at home. It was like, oh, okay. I'll do exactly what you say, Elizabeth. I'm not going to make you look silly on camera. Nope. Oh, come on. Okay. So I swear it works. You'll see battle with this in the beginning and then you'll be so happy. This is how my pins end up like, hello, what, what happened to you? I've had a hard day. I was on a soap Friday. I did not get used for pinning. I got used for like prying. You know what? Let me try that purple thing. <laughs> Maybe that purple thing will help. Come on, that purple thing. Come to the rescue. Okay. It's kind of working. I see it. Oh, guys. Don't be afraid of your bias tape maker. It's really great once you get it to work. It's a real pain sometimes, but you'll be so happy you did. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's try a tiny scissor point. <laughs> okay. It's like getting jammed. I've really done a number on it. Okay. Ooh, the tiny scissor point. It works. Okay. Do you see it there? I'm going to go ahead and grab it with a pin, maybe. Try and pin through the layer. Oh, as soon as you can get it, just pull it a little bit. There. Ah, oh, oh, that was such a struggle. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our pins away. I feel like I lost a pin. Okay, once you get it started, you wanna make sure it's not curving under weird like it's starting to do here. Something is happening. Okay, you're going to go ahead and once you've started it initially, take your iron and just go ahead and give it a little press. Don't forget to turn your iron on as that helps. Okay. Once you get going, use this to hold it and pull gently. Something is stuck. Oh, and that was a seam I just went over. So of course that was like a little tricky. And you'll see that as you uh, pull, you're pressing and not burning your fingers, which is so nice. Oh, we're coming up to a seam. Let me just set my iron down. I'm using this little reliable OVO iron and it's a little travel iron and steamer. So it's got a lot of steam coming off of it. Um, okay, as I come up to this, I'm going to try and just like feed it in gently or I might just shove it through and be like, come on, work. Ooh. Yeah, see that gentle, gentle. <laughs> that was not so gentle. <laughs> All right. I'll fix that later because that seam was just not having any of me today or I wasn't having any of it. Was like, nope, we're not playing that game. We already played the don't be afraid of your bias tape maker game. All right. Oh, see, that seam is nice. That seam works. Now I have these seams because I didn't have a, a big enough piece of fabric right away. So I just pieced together some smaller pieces. It's much easier if you just have what you need right away. Okay. Once you have your piece so lovely and pressed like this, now you can take it and you could give it another press like this. And you could do that for the entire length of it. Or you could just take it over to your machine. So let's just go over to the machine. And um, I'm just going to kind of gently uh, keep folding it as I sew it through my needle. All right. So I'm going to put this back on my needle in the center just so I can see where it is and I'm going to go forward and backwards and I'm uh, staying like pretty close to the edge of these two probably like an eighth of an inch away I want to make sure that you're catching all the layers and this is going to be your strap so uh, no one's going to notice if it's not totally perfect as long as it stays together, your bag is going to be great. And it's totally fine. Okay, getting toward one of those finicky seams I've got here. Oh, look, I went through a wider piece of fabric. So if your machine is giving you any trouble, you could try holding it here as you kind of gently guide it through too. 
That's usually like if you want to help it over a seam, I do that. Okay. A plus. We're just sewing fast as the wind now. And I'm slowing down because I'm getting to the end and I just want to make sure that I'm keeping all the layers together. And then once I get to the end, it's going to reverse. Okay. Now, you've just done that beautiful long seam. Do it on the other side too, just to, I mean, you don't have to, but I think it makes it look nice and even and makes your strap look more professional. So we're just gonna do that real quick. is a long scene. <laughs> All right, we're almost finished with it. All right. And just like that, your strap is finished. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up. All nice. And just set it aside. Because you did that and it was perfect. Okay. At this point now, um, the pattern asks you to prepare your bias binding. And your bias binding, oh, that's why when I did that at home, I only did my bias binding with my bias tape maker, not with all the layers. Totally works with all the layers though too. So um, for your bias tape binding, it's important that you cut it on the bias, which means that if your fabric greens are like this, you need to cut it at a 45 degree angle. So if you have a fat quarter, you're gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle. You can use, of course, this ruler doesn't have any of the markings on it. Let's see. You can use a ruler that has a 45 degree line. If you cut a straight edge and then line your ruler up with that 45 degree angle, then you can just cut along the ruler and you know you're getting a 45 degree uh, cut. Okay, so once you've made your, your little pieces, you're going to take this to your bias tape maker. So let's go back to up close. And watch how easy this is when you are not using uh, something with a ton of interfacing, when you're just kind of like, Hi, now you can use your pin and it's like, oh, hello there. You wanted me to help you out? Okay, all right. So going back to our bias tape, this one is so much easier to feed through the bias tape maker too because it's just a single layer of fabric. Whereas your other one, you had a layer of a linen um, and you had interfacing and you had seams. It just was a little trickier. Okay. Okay, I really like this case because it has a, a heat resistant thing so you can set it right down on the case without it creating a problem for you, which is lovely. Um, with bias tape, I just leave it like this until I'm ready to use it now. Turn off my pattern. All right, let's go back to sewing. Now you have your bias tape, set that aside and you are ready to move on to the next step of the pattern. Now, if you're making um, the large size purse, you have a pocket option. So you can sew two pieces right side together, follow directions, etc. cetera. Um, we aren't doing the large version, so we're just going to skip over the pocket because the little baby purse is a big, it's big enough to fit quite a bit of stuff. I forgot to bring all my stuff to show you at the end, but I tested it and it can fit like a pack of Tums and a wallet and your glasses and your keys and your phone um, and probably like some lotion and stuff too, but the Tums were the important things to remember. <laughs> all right. Next step, we're going to prepare a zipper. So you cut these little pieces. They're only one inch by two and a half inches. They're itty bitty. Um, so the first thing you need to do is fold down by half an inch. So actually, if we go over to up close, I'll show you. I'm gonna fold over by half an inch on all of them. And this is a, just an estimate, half an inch. Oh, I turned the power off. I should turn the power back on. All right. And you're just gonna give it a little press. Yay. Okay. And at this point, this is when you're going to want to start considering using your, um, using your 
zipper tape. So you have your zipper and you have this wonder or washer, wash, wonder tape, wonder tape. Okay, you are going to go ahead and basically going to do this on the top and bottom of your zipper. And so what I found that's really helpful, the pattern suggests that you can pin, but um, I try and avoid pinning whenever possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of wonder tape right here. And this stuff has, um, it's sticky on one side when you unroll it, and then it has a little piece of paper that you take off. So um, you can kind of see the fusible, it's not fusible, it's just sticky, and it will wash away when you um, wash it or if it gets too wet. So I'm going to do that. And this is now stuck to it, which is nice. Doesn't move around too much. I use this anytime I set a zipper because it's magic, pure magic. I'm going to go ahead again and stick this and then just take the, t the paper off. The sticky part is still attached. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Okay, now don't worry if your zipper comes out just a little bit, that's okay. Let's repeat this on the top. Um, yeah, let's repeat this on the top. Now, when I'm working on zippers, I like to try and make them kind of not space out like that because it annoys me. So I'm going to take my zipper tape, or yeah, wonder tape, zipper tape, tape. And I'm going to hold these pieces together. And oh, it's stuck to my finger. If, it, if you unzip it, it's actually kind of a little easier to do this. So I'm gonna hold this per, uh, zipper together, matching these two larger little end stoppers and tape that together there. And then repeat with one more little piece of tape. Um, please note, if you do this with your good scissors, they will get gooey. Uh, the tape, or the, yeah, the, the tape does leave a little bit of residue. So um, use your paper scissors or use scissors that you can clean with like some Goo Gone or something. All right, now that you've got your pieces taped, you're ready to go back to your sewing machine. Now you're going to sew along the line just about an eighth of an inch away from the pieces you just taped. And when you taped them, you did a really good job of making sure that they were lined up um, on the front and back. So when you do this, you're going to end up sewing through all layers. So I just did that. I sewed through all layers. It looks fantastic if I do say so myself. Just gonna go ahead and do that on the other side. Great. So if we go up close, I can show you how this looks. So now you have a zipper and you've sewn through here and it's connected on the other side too. So now you have a longer zipper piece basically to work with. Okay, let's go over to our desk and I've made a little bit of a mess. Now at this point, um, it's important to read the directions. Um, I read the directions a few times and then I was like, what the heck am I doing? And it took me, I had to like pause the Brady Bunch and like, you know, really, really read the directions to figure out what I was supposed to be doing because I uh, w wasn't paying enough attention the first time. So here's what you do. Let's clear our space. Messy sewer. Okay, with the exterior front panel up, center prepared zipper right side down, zipper teeth at the left, okay, so, or zipper pull at the left, so that's gonna go here. Now these are longer than the bag, and so I just centered it, and um, when you're doing this, it actually is super helpful to use this zipper tape again, so, this is gonna be here, so I'm gonna, on the top, I'm gonna just add some of this tape close to the edge of the um, zipper. Okay. And I'm going to remove the paper that I was using. Oh, it helps to have a little bit of a nail when you do this, because otherwise you uh, accidentally take the whole thing off. Okay, and once I've got it about centered, I'm going to just make sure that it's uh, lined up with the edge of the top of the purse and I'm gonna tack it down. And now that tape is holding these pieces together, which is great. And I'm going to do another piece of tape along the top. 
And this might be a little bit overkill. I'm sure you could do this without all the tape, but I, I like using it. It helps. I don't know what's happening over here, <laughs> but um, all I can see are two people going, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> oh, okay. Zipper tape is off. Okay, so you have your front exterior your uh, zipper and now you're going to take your lining ex uh, your front lining which is the shorter piece the one that you marked with the s earlier on and you're going to just tack that right on top make sure that the edges of your piece for the front and the back or in the lining are lining up nicely so that when you sew them um, it just stays lovely okay now we're going to sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance and you might have a little bit of trouble getting around the zipper sometimes, so I, I don't know, I just kind of do it. Um, I'll move my, I'll move the zipper as I go. So, okay, I'm just about the part where the zipper is, and so I'm going to lift my foot, zip the zipper shut. called Wonder Tape, and it's like a wash away um, sticky tape. I don't know. Okay, I can't make this zipper work with me, so I'm just going to, whoa, see, that's why you move the zipper. Okay, I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to move the zipper. <laughs> this is <laughs> the real, okay, I'm going to, I cut my seam. I'm going to move my zipper to um, closed, uh, to a piece where I've already sewn, and now I'm going to go back and um, start and stop again so I cover that. It's kind of less than ideal because like in theory you just want one nice strong seam that's not going to have a problem but it's going to be fine. No one's ever going to know. Okay and now you have this piece that looks beautiful like this. Now um, let's see top stitch along zipper. Th okay it does say to top stitch. I think I, I think you can top stitch now. So I'm going ahead, I'm just pulling all the layers kind of away from the zipper so that they're just lining up nicely. And now you're going to top stitch just like about an eighth of an inch on that line. It's going to keep everything together and lying nice and flat. And let's just go ahead and do that then. Whoa. Whoa. It's because the zipper. The zipper is just making my foot go crazy. It doesn't like it. If you have a piping foot or like a foot that doesn't have it, or a zipper foot, if you had a zipper foot, <laughs> it would make your life a lot easier. I probably have one. I just didn't use it, so, okay. Now you have a beautiful top stitch line. So if you wanna look in the up close, you can see how great your top stitch line looks. And now you're going to repeat this process on the top, uh, but you're going to use it with your accent pieces. So. Now you're taking these rectangular pieces and you're going to repeat that process, hopefully with like less struggle than I had with that zipper, uh, on the top too. So let's do that. Now, if you haven't trimmed away your uh, like extra layers, how this is coming off further, I haven't trimmed them yet. So when you do this, make sure that you're lining this piece up with this piece, not with this piece, because you're going to cut this extra piece off uh, and if you line it up there, it's going to be a really weird bag. It just won't work. So that's a thing to think about. Okay. So again, I just taped that piece on so you can kind of see what it's going to look like. It's nice. It stays politely where it should. And I'm going to do that again on the back. When I buy this tape, I buy like eight rolls at a time because I use it for everything. Like, oh, you know what you could do here instead of pinning? You could use tape. It's so nice. <laughs> okay. And you're putting your right sides um, down and the wrong sides out when you do this because when you sew this, it'll pull up like this. Okay, but don't do that yet because you have to sew. And my zipper's on this side, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sew till about here, then I'm going to start and stop, and then I'm going to move my zipper. And if I was just using a zipper foot, it would make it a lot easier. The reason that that's happening is because the bulk of my uh, zipper is getting caught in my foot and the foot doesn't want to go around the zipper. That's why you have zipper feet. I should probably use one. Oh, I love, I love that boat. 
I, I avoid pinning when at all possible. Okay. Tape everything. Okay. So, now that you have this beautiful piece, you're going to go ahead and again do that top stitching. So, I think it helps to close the zipper first kind of gently pull all the layers away from the zipper. Now, the reason you do that is because if you don't do that and you have it like this and then you top stitch, you're not going to be able to move the zipper with very much ease. It's going to be a real headache and it won't be a super practical purse. So just make sure that you're kind of gently pulling away from the, uh, from the zipper with all your pieces and then go ahead and top stitch. Now I'm going to actually move my needle over to the other side. It's going to make my life so easy, I think. I could be wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> woohoo! Look at that. Easy breezy. That's so nice. Okay. All right. So now you have this piece that looks great on the back and great on the front and looks like it's much larger up here than that, right? Because that's where I got in my life the other day. I was like, um, I don't know, and I don't have more pieces on the top. What am I supposed to do? Read the directions. It helps. Take your scissors and just go ahead and trim this excess piece so that it's in line with your, um, your other pieces of fabric. And mine looks like it's not quite lined up there, but you know what? It's a half inch email rope. Be fine. I'm just going to kind of like gently push it over like this and then when I sew it, it'll look perfect. So don't worry if yours has that too. Worry if it's like more than a half inch and it'll show in the half inch seam allowance. Okay, now with the remaining top accent pieces, place them in the zipper tight. Very long sides. Okay, there's one more in the back. Okay, I think I remember. I do. I think, okay. <laughs> All right, yes, okay. With these together, I just don't want to do it wrong on camera. That would be embarrassing. Okay, you're going to lay your, um, your exterior back on top of all of these layers here on the front, and then lay your lining exterior on the back of that. So now you have this like funny looking sandwich with a uh, everything happening at the front and this on the back. And um, I'm gonna use a few wonder clips so that I don't have to pin. Just kind of hold it all together. You don't want these layers to shift, especially in that um, top accent. This is also where you could pin, but you don't have to. So you could, you could, do, you could do clips. All right, now using a half inch seam allowance, you're going to go ahead and sew all four of those layers together. And make sure you remove your wonder clips as you go. Okay, so now you have this. Woohoo! You're going to go ahead and gently pull the exterior back and lining away from the top accent pieces, and you're going to top stitch through all the layers. Now, what that's going to do is going to make it look just like it does here with that beautiful little top line accent stitching. You're just going to be so happy that you did that. You won't even be able to contain your joy. I'm telling you, whoa. Okay, so. Wait, let me, I'm gonna start in a little bit. Alrighty, alrighty. just that was a beautiful top accent stitching it just looks so nice okay now you have this and it looks pretty great it's pretty great so what you do now is uh, fold this in half with the right side so the exterior side together and kind of tuck the uh, the turn tuck the the darts in so that it kind of nests like a little egg at the bottom Okay, when you pin this, it helps to nest your seam. So if we go over to, well, we're not gonna pin, but if you go over to up close, I'll kind of show you. So where this dart's going this way, let's send this dart 
the other way and how this dart now is going this way and this dart's going this way. Now when you, okay, this is a lot. The darts you wanna make sure that are really looking nice together are these ones for the exterior since those will be visible. So you wanna make sure that they're lined up in just the right spot. And then you can use a little clip to hold it all together there. And then do the exact same thing on the other side. Making sure that that dart is lining up really lovely with this other one. And the reason that you're spreading these out is to reduce the bulk. If you put all of these seams on one side, you're going to have a really, really, really thick seam and it's going to be really hard for you to sew all the way around. All right, let's go back to our main camera. Okay, now you have this and you're going to sew like a big U around it using a half inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, before you do that, unzip your zipper halfway. Otherwise you get to play the struggle game where you're like trying to undo the zipper and it's like really sewn in and it's frustrating. So unzip your zipper part of the way. Okay, now go ahead and sew using a half inch seam allowance. Okay. And take it a little slow as you go around the curves because like I said, there's just a lot of fabric there. And you wanna make sure also that the lines at the top are lining up, but I didn't say that. Well, you don't have to make sure. It just means that the side of your bag, you might notice if they don't. You might not care and that's okay then too. Okay. Oh, like I did not. Well, it's okay, it's fine. All right, now you have this bag with a whole bunch of the raw edges around it. And at this point, um, you're going to use your bias tape. So don't be scared, it's not too bad. All you're going to do is sew your bias tape all the way around. So the easiest way to do bias tape, I've been thinking about this, okay. The easiest, well, there's, there's two ways that you could do it. There's like the technical way where you do it in two steps, where you sew along the one edge and then you turn over and s stitch down. The other thing you could do is that you could just sew it like a sandwich all the way first, like this, like wrap it around your edges and sew, but then you might miss some spots, so you might have to go back and re-sew. Um, depends on how you're feeling that day, how much time you have, and if you care, because it's the inside of your purse and no one's going to see it. But we're going to do it the correct way, so we're going to just go ahead and sewing on the it's a half inch seam allowance, but sewing on the line, so the main fold, you've unfolded now one piece of your bias tape and you're gonna just sew all the way around your bag along that line. And th what the bias does is it gives it a lot of ease. So as you work around a curve, it's going to be easy to, um, easy to, to move the piece of fabric around that curve. So a lot of times um, people use bias tape like for this, but also like in garments, they'll use them to like finish a neck or something so that you don't have to do like a facing or anything like that. It's a very nice forgiving way of closing up seams. Okay, so at the top, I didn't do anything special. I just started like a little bit over the edge. And here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut a little bit above the edge. Now the pattern says that because this part is enclosed um, and like on the inside, no one's ever going to see it and you won't be able to get to it. So it's okay that you, you don't have to finish that in any special way. All right, so now that you've got this attached, all you have to do now is gently pull it around the edges. Let's actually show this up close. Let's just, yeah. Okay, so you've gently pulled this around your edges and using your wonder clips, you can just fold over and clip into place around your bag. Now again, this is the inside of your bag, so if you have like a little crease or something, or if it's not totally perfect, that's okay because it's the inside and no one will see it. And if they see it, if you gift this bag to someone and they see it, they take the time to turn it inside out and then say, hey, what's happening with this bias tape? You can be like, you know what? I would like that bag back. I don't think that either you should have it anymore because real friends don't tell you about your bias tape. 
they just go, oh, that's so beautiful. And then they just use it and use it forever. It's just perfect. All right. So just like that, now what we're going to do is we're going to sew along this line. And you, it'll catch on the other side, and that's okay. So we're going over to our sewing machine. And we're going to sew, sew, sew. And I'm going to move my needle to the center position so I can see uh, where I'm catching it. And just take your time. Whoa, I just have a lot of layers, so this machine's like, hey, that's a lot of layers. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew. I did know. It's okay if it's not uh, totally perfect or all the way pulled over another half inch because as long as the raw edges are enclosed, that's really what's important. That's what's going to make this bag something that you can like wash without it falling apart because all the seams are taken care of and out of sight. Okay. All right, so maybe not the most beautiful, but it's totally enclosed. I totally used the wrong color bobbin, so it's gray thread on this side. Okay, it's the inside, no one will see. Now you're just going to head and uh, cut the tops off. Be careful that you do not cut into, um, be careful that you do not cut off uh, the bag because that would be annoying and not so great. Um, now at this point, you're going to turn your bag inside out and you're almost to the really fun part where you get to set your uh, grommet. So you're going to turn the bag inside out and push it through. Make sure that you uh, are really getting in there just to get the, the shape of the bag. And then when you get to these top corners, um, if you're struggling, you can use, like, I have that purple thing. I've talked about it before. I just think it's fun. I like the color. I like that it's just a convenient, handy tool to have. And, uh, yeah, and it acts like an extra thing you can push out. So pushing out your corners, and they're looking really good. And now you've got this beautiful bag, and you're ready to set grommets. Now, this is something you need to do outside, so we're going to show you a quick uh, clip on how to set grommets at home. Now that I've cut the hole, I'm going to test and see if the grommet is fitting. Now this one isn't quite fitting, so I'm going to take a sharp pair of scissors and just go ahead and make that hole just a little bit bigger, making sure you keep it centered in your project. At this point, you're going to want to shove your grommet through all the layers of your fabric. The hole should be just big enough for the grommet to sit in it snugly. If it's too big, the grommet will move around, and that's not what you want. Now at this point, you need to take your project outside, and you want to do this on concrete. You're going to find the anvil, which is this little silver looking donut, and you're going to set the grommet in the groove. It's going to fit very snugly. So since this grommet's already in your bag, go ahead and lay it right down. Now find the washer, which is the piece with the teeth. You'll know the teeth because they have the pokey sides. And you want the teeth towards your fabric. You're going to lay it around the grommet. Next, find your setting tool, which is this little silver guy. With this hole into the hole with the grommet, you're going to go ahead and set it there, hold it, and then hammer several times. Make sure you're giving it a really good hammer so that it's securing all the layers of your grommet together nicely. If it's too loose, your grommet will be moving around and that's how you know you need to go ahead and give it a few more whacks. Go ahead and just brush all those extra little strands of thread off and then you'll be ready to move on to the second side. Now that I've cut the hole, I'm going to test it. Wasn't that exciting? 
I was, I loved it. Okay, I realized, Doctor, I sent you off to go learn about setting grommets, but I forgot to tell you about like how to mark where you're going to place them. So, important to note, um, when you're when you're on your project and you're ready to go, make sure that you take your grommet and you're going to want to center it as best you can and use this funnel to kind of mark where you want to have that go. So that's where you saw that circle that I drew in the last one. You could put your grommets anywhere. If you loved grommets, you could put them like here, 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 as many grommets as you want, but you really only need two for this bag. So you'll mark in your hole, and then like you saw in the video, you'll, whoa, you'll cut and you'll hammer, and it's so much fun. Just, um, I always recommend too, like if you haven't done it before and you don't want to start on your bag, make yourself a little sandwich. Do this, uh, the same number of layers with interfacing, maybe even the same like scrap fabrics of what you were using here, and test it out before you just jump in with your bag. That way, if you uh, get a little nervous and make a mistake the first time around, you don't ruin your project. But overall, it's really easy, it's really fun, and you end up with this like super cute, ready to go grommets. Now, at this point, you're just going to take your strap that you made very early on and going from the back of your bag through the grommet into the front, you're just going to tie a knot and um, tie it so that it's like close to the edge. And look at that, it sticks. So you're going to repeat the process on the other side, pushing from the back of your bag through to the front, tie a knot, And just like that, you have a bag. Now you can repeat this as many times as you want for the miniature. You could do this with the larger size. Um, and then you can wear this cute little bag anywhere you go. It's a great bag for Disneyland or like the mall. I don't know, I don't really go to the mall. But here's <laughs> like, look at all the stuff that you can fit in this bag. And I think it'll be really impressive to see because it has that grommet or that, that grommet, the dart at the bottom, it gets a little wider. So you could fit like a whole bunch of stuff in here. Like all of it, all the stuff you need to make a little bag. So many pairs of scissors, more grommets. Oh, and if you're going to the store, sometimes these grommets, what they're called grommets in the pattern, they also call them eyelets. Remember that while we said uh, you do need 3 8 inch for the pattern, you can get by with 7 over 16 inch. Uh, that's what I was using here and it totally worked. And just like that, you got yourself a little purse. So thank you for joining us for It's So Friday. We hope you've enjoyed making this forage bag with us. And if you make your own forage bag or just bag using, yeah, forage bag, this is a forage bag. So if you make the forage bag or the bag using forage, please uh, share with us using hashtag It's So Friday Finish. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next week for another exciting episode of It's So Friday.